I am back with another tutorial on cryptocurrency. I know in the past I implied I'd be doing a lot of these, although on account of both personal matters and the apparent onset of the apocalypse, I've been unable to really deliver on that. But nevertheless, I'm here today with a uh, video on how to set up a cedar for your coin. So a cedar, if you're not aware, or more accurately, a DNS cedar, is what most coins in the Bitcoin family use to find new nodes to download blockchain data from when they first come online. So DNS seeders are cool little DNS servers that actually crawl the internet looking for healthy nodes from their coin using metrics such as connectivity and uh, the size of the blockchain that they have. And based off this, they make a list of very strong nodes. And when a new client comes online and uh, they ping one of these servers asking for data, they get a list of very healthy nodes to ensure that they have no trouble connecting to the rest of the network and getting blockchain data. So in other words, if you're very serious about growing your coins network, these things are pretty much a must. Before we get started in earnest, you're going to need three things. The first of which is unsurprisingly a coin. So if you followed my previous tutorial series and you have a coin based on Litecoin's version 0.8 code base, that'll work just fine. If you either upgraded your coin or just started with newer code base, like version 16, that's also fine. It'll work all the same. You're also going to need a VPS or a virtual private server. I will be using a DigitalOcean VPS in this video. I mentioned DigitalOcean in my previous videos. If you do not already have a DigitalOcean account and would like some credit, uh, we'll give you a referral link in the description that should give you about, uh, I think, two months of uh, free hosting for a, a very light node. It's about $10 a credit, but I'll get, place that in the referral link. The only important thing to remember for the VPS is that I've had some some difficulties using Ubuntu 18 for some reason. So when you make your VPS, I highly, highly, highly recommend you use Ubuntu 16 when doing so. And once you have your coin and VPS, you're also going to need a domain name that you have full control over. And I will um, go more in depth about what you need to do with the domain later in the video. But anyway, let's get started. So like all great things that I do, we're going to start by shamelessly cloning something from GitHub. More specifically, we're going to be cloning Litecoin Cedar, which is made by a guy called Pooler. He's very active in the cryptocurrency development scene. So we're going to go here, we're going to go git clone Litecoin Cedar, and just like everything else, I will pay either either in the description or uh, paste, but I haven't decided yet, paste all the commands and stuff that I use. And I'm actually not going to be using Funcoin for this example, just because uh, Funcoin's network is not really that strong. I'm going to be using a coin with a stronger network. I'm going to be using some coin, which as a quick aside, you may have noticed if you look at my GitHub, I contributed to some coin. That's just because it's actually a project born out of my video series. The developers contacted me, asked me for help. I provided it and the coin has since grown. If you have any questions about some coin, please do not ask me. All I really did was contribute a bit here and there. I'm not super involved with the project at all. But now that that's out of the way, I'm going to rename this some coin cedar and clone it accordingly so there we go it's cloned and now we're going to uh, and before we rename things let's just install the dependencies so i'm just going to paste this in here um, a bunch of uh, common stuff if you've actually compiled a coin daemon on this vp on the vps you're using you probably already have all this but just for fun now i'm going to press it anyway i'm 99 percent sure i have all this and yes i do which makes it convenient since I don't have to cut the video while it installs. But you'll install that, and then you're going to go into the uh, Cedar directory, like such, and we are going to do some renaming. So pretty similar to, almost actually identical, to what we did before in my other video. We're going to change the occurrences of Litecoin to, in this case, Semcoin, like such. We're going to change the lowercase equivalent as well. There we go. And we're also going to change the peer-to-peer -peer port like this. In the case of uh, some coin, I think the peer-to-peer -peer port is quadruple threes. There we go. So that's all the changing that's required, nice and easy. Now we're actually going to modify the code. The first file that we're going to modify is db.h. Okay, so we're going to go right down here. It's very early in the file, which is easy, and you'll notice an inline function called get require height. Now, if you are a, if you are a smart cookie, 
you may have uh, maybe been able to put together that this function decides the minimum height that a node has to have in order to make the node list for the DNS seeder. So essentially this is the minimum required height to be used to seed new nodes. Uh, there are two numbers. If you recognize the uh, question mark function, I forget what it's actually called, you know what this means, but if you don't, it's fine. On the left, the left number, this one here, is for the testnet. The one on the right is for the mainnet, since I don't care about the testnet right now, I'm not going to touch it. If you do care about the testnet, change it accordingly, but I don't remember, or know really, how many blocks are on some coins network. I'm just going to arbitrarily say 500,000, uh, like that. Um, of course, if your coin does not have 500,000 blocks, do not use that. Just use a number that's close, but not higher than the current maximum chain height to ensure that all nodes that are used to seed basically have the entire blockchain and aren't stale. So here we go, set the minimum height to 500,000. That's all we need to do in this file. We're going to save it like that. Very good, and now we're going to modify main.cpp, everyone's favorite CPP file. If it's not your favorite file, I hate you. But here we go, we're going to use the shortcut control underscore, oops, control underscore to go to a specific line. In that case, the line is 403. And here, you're going to see uh, a list of existing seeds. So since we did the name changes, this used to be things like Litecoin tools and Litecoin pool. But uh, I think actually Sumcoin has quite a collection of existing seeds, so for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to pretend that it doesn't. And I'm going to delete all these like that. And just, just because it sometimes likes when you do this, we're going to have the local host listed. Uh, also, make sure you leave this here, otherwise it will be very angry with you. Um, I forget what, exactly what coding quirk caused that, something like do with the null termination. Not important. Anyway, oh yeah, it is the null it's just an null terminated array. I remember. It's not really important at all, thought I'd share. And again, right below it, you have the testnet seeds. Again, since I don't care about the testnet right now, I'm not going to be touching it at all. But if you do care about the testnet, there is something else in this file you'll want to see, and that is line 461. And here you'll notice peer magic. So if you're doing the testnet on your seeder, you're going to change this from the from Litecoin's testnet peer magic to the peer magic of your coin's testnet. Again, don't care. We're going to control X and save that file. And now we're going to go on to protocol. Oh, it beeped at me. .cpp. Ignore that. And we're going to go down a little bit just to line 25. Uh, I'm okay. And we're going to do the mainnet peer magic, which I do care about. So here you'll just swap it out from Litecoin's peer magic to the peer magic of your coin. So in the case of some coin, that's that. The second byte is the same. It bytes like that. And then it's D0. And that's some coin's peer magic in the code. Uh, and that's all we need to do in this file. So we're going to save it. Yay, we've done all the code modifications that we have to do. See, that was very painless, wasn't it? Uh, now we actually have to compile it. It's very easy, it just uses make. And it shouldn't take that long, uh, certainly not long enough for me to cut the video. So while it does that, we're just going to, or I'm going to lean back in my chair and uh, contemplate how glorious the make file system is just for a moment. All right, I'm already bored. Please hurry up. It should be done in a second. It's not, not exactly a large program. Come on, you got it. Hey, it's done. Okay. So now, uh, just to see that the executable is working as intended, we can do DNS seed H, and we can see the flags that are available to us. But before we go any further, we're going to make sure our domain is configured correctly so that we can actually use the seeder. So I'm going to pause the video and be right back. Okay, now it's time to configure our domain. So what we have to do here is we need to make an A record and an NS record. Now, how exactly you go about doing that depends on whoever provided you the domain. In my case, I'm doing it through DigitalOcean. Note that DigitalOcean actually does not provide domains. If you want to do what I'm doing and essentially let DigitalOcean control the, the domain, you need to 
uh, configure the name service correctly from whoever provided it to you. I will put a uh, link in the description showing you how to do that, if should you desire to do so. Though, nevertheless, you should be able to do exactly what I'm doing here through the control panel of whoever gave you the domain. So let's get started. So this is the DigitalOcean domain control panel. You can see I have my domain, mybloodhurts.com. This is what I'm going to be using for the cedar. So if I go in here, now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an A record that just points to the uh, the droplet with the cedar. So we're just going to do at, uh, and this is the droplet that has the DNS seed on it. Please do not ask me about the other two. There we go. So A record at mybloodearths.com, create record, and there it is. That's all good. Now we need to make an NS record for the cedar. So we go over here, make an NS record. And we're going to have a subdomain for it. It's going to be funcedar.mybloodhurts.com. You can, of course, make this subdomain whatever you want, though it should probably be seed or DNS seed something or another just for the sake of making sense. And then we want this to go to mybloodhurts.com. Make sure you use that record right there. You're using the A record, so it's got to be the URL. And then we create the record. And there it is, and that's all you had to do from the domain control panel. Uh, control panel. Note that um, DNS uh, records don't propagate instantly, so it might take some time for these changes to take effect across the internet. Don't flip out if things don't work at first, that's completely fine. So now uh, it's actually time to start it up. Okay, now it's time to start the thing. Before we do that, I'd like to say that I've had much better luck getting the seeder to actually find the rest of the network when you have a node for the coin you want to do this for running on the same VPS. So in my case, I have an instance of some coin running on this same server. I highly, highly, highly recommend you do the same for whatever coin you're doing it for. But uh, to actually have this thing run indefinitely, we're going to use a tool called Tmux, which is a, it's a terminal multiplexing tool that essentially lets it run while we are offline. So here's uh, what we're going to do. We're going to do Tmux new S, and we're going to name the session Cedar. There we go. We are now in a multiplex terminal window. It's okay if you don't really know what that means. You don't need to know. So just to take a look again, uh, let's see what our options are as far as flags go. Okay. So we're going to configure it like this. DNS seed H fun Cedar as homage to the original fun coin, of course, dot my blood hurts dot com. That's the host name of the DNS seed, and then the host name of the name server is just going to be my blood hurts dot com. And just for fun, we're going to do an M record. I'm going to do it as fun toshi dot my blood hurts dot com. That can be anything you want. I mean, if you have an actual email address for SOA records, you should probably use that. I don't, so I'm using this one, which is not a real email address. By the way, if you send something to it, it's not going to work. And then we just let it run. So there we go. Now, it's not going to find the network instantly. So I'm going to let it sit for a, a little while, and I'll start the video up again when it does find things. But real quick, here's how you leave a TMLUX window. You do Control B and then press D and you're out. So, okay, I'll pause the video and when it finds the network, I will show you. All right, so I've given it some time. By now, it should have found a nice list of healthy nodes that it likes. And it would, of course, give these nodes to new clients coming online so that they can find the rest of the network. We will check up on it by reopening the TMUX session like so. Tmux AT Cedar, yay. Oh, wow, okay. It has found quite a bit that it likes. Of course, uh, since some coins network is apparently pretty big, um, uh, it's found a lot of IP addresses that it likes and doesn't like. Um, of course, if you're using a smaller coin, uh, it's not going to be quite this large. But so long as it's not um, zero over some number shown here at the bottom left, then you're fine. It, it'll make a list when it's... Uh, pinged with a DNS request. So this is all good. Also, as an aside, uh, if you open Tmux and it's it's really jumbled, it, look, it just looks like a jumbled mess of uh, text, but you can still see something like what you're seeing here. Uh, that's perfectly normal. Sometimes Tmux just does that. I wouldn't pay too much heed to it, but okay. All right, so we can see it's obviously found the network and it has, uh, it looks like 42 addresses that it likes. So I can, 
detached from this session with control B and then D. And if I wanted to, I could log out of the VPS and the CD would still run, but I'm not going to do that right now. Right now I'm going to bring up my Windows terminal and we're going to look here and we're going to do a domain test or a DNS ping on this to see if we get a list of healthy nodes. So the way we do that is we do NS lookup, get my mouse out of the way, uh, funseeder.mybloodhurts.com. And you can see right there, that is a list of some healthy IP addresses on the Sumcoin network that new clients could use to essentially come online, download the blockchain, and just get a good uh, cross-section of the greater network. So uh, if you see this, congratulations, you're all set. You could take the Cedars full URL and put it uh, where the DNS Cedars go in your source code. I'm assuming if you clicked on this video, you probably know where that is, but just for good measure, in the description, I will put the location, some of the old new code base, where that would go. So just as a uh, closing remark, I mentioned the beginning of the video. I said I kind of implied in the past I'd be doing a lot of these crypto videos. I'd like to, but, you know, personal matters, apocalypse can get a little tricky sometimes. So uh, that may or may not happen. Uh, But for this video in particular, I think uh, probably for about a month or so before it gets crazy like it always does, I'll do tech support as much as I can uh, in the comments to answer your questions. But... um, I also made an announcement at some point about, um, I don't even know if you guys see YouTube announcements, my subscribers anyway, uh, about potentially making a fun video showcasing some of the coins that were made as a result of my series. So if you'd be interested in having your coin featured, if it's either funny or interesting, please either just put it, you can put it in in a comment or send it to me or something. And if I get enough responses, maybe I'll do something like that. That could be fun. Who knows, maybe I might even make uh, a little exchange just for coins from my videos. That could be fun. Anyway, uh, that's all I've got for today. So have fun with your new Cedar and good luck with your projects.